Hey everybody, welcome back to Deadfire. Let's take a look. Now well, let's get As you into wish. This. Poor fools. They were unprepared for this. Yep, more people with their souls drained. Hmm. Definitely want the pry bar. Not much of use there. Sorry if it's a little bit on the dark side because, well, this is a dungeon. And, well, there's not much I can do about that. Oh, this fucking puzzle. I'd completely forgotten this exists. Wonderful. I see a soul in the darkness. One red. You got a fireball, right? Yes, you do. Gunpowder barrel, all right. A lot. Let's get some. Get some kaboom going on. Alright, that's the way to open up combat right there. Nice and swift, decisive, and ultimately fatal. Got an imp horn. Keeping an eye out. Tattered note. Sword. Hmm. Well, uh, it airs better with a single sword or single blades than he is with uh, multiple blades. Let's see here. That's where we are. A trial of flame. Sounds like something endurance would like. I'll take care of it. Now, let's see if I can remember how to do this. Well, leave it to me. Not that, all right. Nope. Okay, I will be right back. I'm not gonna waste a whole lot of time with this. I actually wanna get on with this. So, I shall return. I'll see it done. I knew it was three plates, but you know, it's been a while, so I'm trying to remember exactly what's what. 15 and 22, but what else? Corroded blade, minus one penetration. What the fuck good is this? Now, 
It's unique. I guess that might just as well be the uh, keeping an eye out. The attraction to it. Well, anyway, that's basically how you do that puzzle. And apparently, the previous room is the one that has a hint to that. But trouble uh, up ahead. Lava will be on sick. should say. But for these little minor things, well, yeah, that's pretty fucking minor. Okay, well, that's all Keep that is. That little area. Do a quick save, because I don't want to have to do all this crap all over again. Oh, shit. Sorry, I've, it's been several days since I've actually got a really good sleep, so I'm darkness. just dragging ass. Ready for no, I'm it. not drinking this early in the morning. I mean, shit. Yeah, I will say nice and quiet. having spells per encounter is a little bit much. Another corpse or a couple more corpses of loot. Leave it to me. We're not alone. Oh good, constructs. That can't possibly go badly. Yes. Well, this isn't going to do a lot of damage, but... But that's about the best we can do. I'll think we're than Ross! Fuck it, do it to it. Cried to the cleric, but she is the cleric. Alright. Gotta be another note here. Oh no, I'll be damned. Just tools. Okay, well this is their dig site, so that's got to be, this has to be the correct direction. Thank God for fast mode, being able to sneak in an actual reasonably, wait, hold on a minute guys, reasonably uh, rapid pace is done. quite nice. A 
I see a soul in the darkness. One ready for reaping. soul in the darkness, one ready for reaping. Just kill it. I'm just gonna let the AI handle it. Lava will be on seek. Pillar of Audra. Hmm. Wonder what that could be. And that's another supply that you need on board your ship. Trust me on that one. Don't skimp on the medicine. You have a bunch of sailors on your ship. And, well, let's just put it this way. These are some nasty motherfuckers. I'll see it done. I think we're just about to the pillar. Yeah, this doesn't matter if we are. Well, what's left of him? I think that's the guy we're looking for. Sure holding on to those papers tight. Okay, well that's what the governor wants. So this pillar of eternity is disconnected from the wheel. Place your hand against the pillar of luminous Audra. A dim, warm light emanates from the surface, but it feels cool to the touch. Pinpricks dance along your fingers, uncomfortable, but not painful. A woman's voice, scratchy, distant, and halting, echoes in your mind. Find your soul in him. You concentrate, peering into the Audra's energy as you would peer into a soul. Its inner light is blinding, but as you become accustomed to it, you perceive the core of the Audra itself, a churning mass of millions of soul fragments. With a jolt, the energy reaches out to you. The Anguithin ruin fragments around you, breaking into incoherent shapes and dissolving to dust falling into an infinite well of dark gray vapor. Even the ground itself disintegrates into nothingness. All that remains is the murky expanse of the in-between. The Audra Pillar, and a skein of golden threads rooted in the pillar that extend far off into the distance. You focus on the threads. You catch glimpses of memories, your memories, mingled among the memories of thousands of other captive souls. The filaments begin to cohere, rapidly twining into a golden cord. With a muffled crack, the cord ripples outward in a violent wave toward the endless distance. The cord undulates over a space so vast that you lose sight of the wave before it finds its end. Then, a heavy creaking, like the sound of mountains shearing under their own weight, washes through the dull gloom of the in-between. 
A violent force yanks you along the cord at an incredible speed. The murk of the in-between warps erratically, as though you are observing it through an ill-ground lens. Just as quickly as you were pulled forward, you stop. Suspended below a massive figure of ancient carved Audra. Like all Audra, it glimmers with energy, but the souls and memories within it are not flowing down. They churn in a vortex that burns at the heart of the statue's mass in some invisible engine. It is Aethys. The great golden cord terminates in his back, sending pulses of energy throughout his limbs as they move. He walks in long, slow strides toward a brilliant pillar of Audra far in the distance. It shines even more brightly in the in-between than Aethys. From within the teeming throng of souls, dozens of eyes look out to you. Through the cord, their collective anguish and despair push at the edge of your mind. Help us! Please! Help us! Their voices echo in your mind. Somewhere within their ranks, you can feel the presence of your own soul slumbering deeper in the gyre. You attempt to evade the lost souls and find yourself within Aethys, but the incredible power flowing through the gods' body repulses you. Not even your Watcher powers can penetrate the massive tides of energy crashing through him. The souls sense your presence and continue to desperately cry out to you. Aethys's stride slows and stops. His head slowly pivots until its great burning eyes are cast back along the cord. As his gaze meets yours, you feel an overwhelming rush of incredible joy mingled with profound sadness. You have sensed similar anguish in lost souls, but never with this intensity. A soothing voice drifts into your mind. It takes great bravery to venture through the in-between, even for a Watcher. A swell of admiration radiates out from the God's heart, a force so intense that it momentarily overwhelms you. You do not need to follow me, for their sake or your own. Something beautiful is coming. Something that will save us all. A great light shines from Aethys's brow, so bright that even the souls within him flinch from the source, cowering in fear. Yeah, something that will save us all. Yeah, sounds pretty fanatical. Through the glare, you see Aethys's massive arm reach up to grasp the golden cord. The tether, carrying energy from the Audra Pillar to him, that also suspends your consciousness. The sun will yet rise, Watcher. You need only wait for its light to come. Aethys yanks on the golden cord, pulling it from his back. The cord tears into filaments that blacken and dissolve to dust. Without pause, he turns to resume his stride toward the distant pillar of Audra, shining on the boundless horizon. You hear the souls within him cry out for just a moment, before your consciousness is snapped away from them. The in-between goes dark. For a second, you feel a mix of nausea and a sensation like spinning and falling. Then the moment ends. Your consciousness has returned to the Anguithin Arena. The world is sideways, the Audra Pillar upside down. You flinch at the feeling that you're standing on the ceiling. The disorientation overwhelms you and you collapse to your knees next to the luminous Audra Pillar. Previously dim and flickering, the pillar now glows with a strong and steady light. You touch the Audra again, but the chill and prickling sensations you felt before are gone, replaced with a comforting warmth, like the embers of a fire that has just lost its flame. You all right? Come on, we just got your back. Well, if you're not sure, now I'm worried. 
I've seen you commune with souls of the dead, but this looked altogether different. What happened? Already? Uh, moving things along rather quickly this time, aren't we? What did Gon say? Is he gonna meet us? What do we do next? He charged you with a divine calling, didn't he? Just like he's done for me. I wonder if he said the same thing to people in Ray Sarah's 20 years ago. Yeah, that's a good question. I wonder what he's after, and why he's been giving me these dreams. The things I've seen, they leave a mark on your soul. I may not know what Gon's got planned for me, but clearly he wanted me to meet you. Okay, that looks like it for this dungeon. Even if it's not, screw it, I don't care. Click on the exit point and let's run out of here. We don't have to sneak anymore. So in case you haven't figured it out, these guys, uh, the Valians, and I believe the, um, oh, what are they called? They, they were the people Kana Rua is a part of. Um, we will, of course, come across them, trust me, we'll come across fucking everybody. Oh, here we go. They're all mining Luminous Audra, which is basically Audra with soul energy in it. And they're basically doing it from pretty much the pillars of eternity themselves. What do you see that I can't, Watcher? All of them? Really? I just told her they're all going to the Audra Pillar. Watcher, we'd like to come with you. Why don't you just go to the Pillar? We would, and we appreciate that you showed us the way, but what if the Audra goes dark again before we reach the beyond? Okay, well, whatever. Come Can on. I harvest the souls now? Thank you for aiding my mission, Watcher. I just knew you'd help me if I followed you. Thank you, Watcher. Okay, so where's the asshole who's in charge of this shithole? You know, I don't really care. We don't really need him, so fuck it. Let's get out of here. The governor is the only one that really counts. For the moment, I'm going to go ahead and skip the uh, side quests here. Because um, I, I do want to get... Mm, excuse me. I do want to get on with the uh, getting out to sea kind of bit and showing you guys how boats or ships work. It's kind of a major deal in this. Unlike having a castle like you did in the original Pillars of Eternity, you have ships or a ship initially. So that's what you have to upgrade. And in Nekataka, it is possible to purchase bigger ship holes and you will see of course what the uh, big deal about that is and yes some guys said it was kind of strange the way this map was set up not really it's basically divided by zones you've got three zones here this one's locked I can't go here yet that's part of a side quest that's the little Huana village attached to this city this is attached to another side quest but I can go here but there's no point to doing so until I actually get the quest and of course, here we go. And of course now, because I've found the various places um, in town, I can save myself some walking time and go straight to a given place, like the harbor, the Kraken's Eye, you know, the inn, or the governor's estate. 
which is another feature I really appreciate in this. Instead of having to suffer through two loading screens, one for loading the town itself, and then the other for the mansion, I just have to suffer for the mansion. Okay, now, moving right along. All right, fuckface, deliver. What can I do for you? At last, Belfetto, tell me, please, what has happened? How much have we lost? I must, I must know. I, I see. And the work? Odorisi's notes? Was there nothing of his research? You did. Gods be kind. Belfetto. Belfetto! We are saved! <clears throat> that is, Odorisi's legacy is not wholly lost. I like to believe the man would find that pleasing. You say this is all the work of the Titan, of uh, Aeotis, and you still insist on looking for him? He destroyed your ship. Killed my people. Would it not make more sense to sail to the far side of the world and away from all this? It is a strange obligation you are under. I understand a little of that. Lucky for you. If I were a more sensible man, I would take this for fable and turn you away. Merla. He will ravage every outpost in the dead fire. That Adra is why we are here, why everyone is here in truth. The Valian Trading Company, the Royal Deadfire Company, countless mercenaries. Yeah, the Rawatai, uh, Rawatai and Royal Deadfire Company. There's four major um, factions here to deal with. There's the Rawatai, you know, Kanahua's or Lua's people, whatever the fuck is. Rua, I forget how the hell his name is spelled or pronounced. The you Mekana's know, people, the Valians, and the Huana. The Huana are the natives, of course. And, of course, the pirates. The first three, well, at least <coughs> the RDC and the uh, Valian company, are after Luminous Audra. The Huana just want to be left alone. They want their own fucking islands back and everyone to fuck off. And, of course, the pirates just want to steal everything that's valuable and not nailed down and, you know, on fire. Of course, if they can take the nails out and put the fire out, they'll take that shit too. You'll want the queen oh, shit. knows Whoops. every other vein of worth in the dead fire. I'm certain she can help you. That is, if she agrees to see you at all. I have not forgotten. We will get you to Nekataka. And for that, you need your sheep. I'll arrange it with Ekawa. Between the two of us, I'm certain we can gather the workers we need. Head down to the beach once you are ready to depart. Pompiaco, it is only right. After all you have done for me. I won't keep you further. You have a long and very strange journey ahead. Some advice. After you have had your audience with the Queen, seek out the Valian Trading Company. They make their headquarters in Nekataka, and the company always appreciates good help. Yeah, I think I might do their faction quest. I don't believe I've gotten that one finished, so I don't have the achievement for that. I think I'm missing that one and the pirate one. I know I got the RDCs because I remember the reward for doing theirs was basically a submarine. Pretty unique ship for getting around in this world. I think it was the fastest one too, but not worth a damn in a fight. And yes, there are ship-to-ship -ship battles in this. It's handled pretty much like a tabletop game. Where basically you choose the direction and speed of your ship, and um, if you manage to get within range, you use your cannon on the enemy ships, things like that. 
Okay, is there an exit point here? Yes, there is. Good. That will save me a little bit of time. That's the jail. There's a quest in there, or a couple of quests, but right now, I'm not going to worry about it. There's only like two or three major side quests here to do, so I'm just going to handle that shit off camera. There's plenty of uh, Huana villages and whatnot to show you. The first one is not all that impressive anyway. And of course, here's our map right here, uh, showing you how to get around. Good, you are here. Clario has made good on his promise. We are making ready to free your ship. I say still that you are fortunate. The ship was nearly lost, but it will float. For how long, I cannot say. You will wish to find a friendly port with some speed, I think. You have to love the, uh, the options here. Then you sink. And the rather abrupt directness. Come. We will see your defiant out to sea. And here's another, uh, the third of the DLCs. We are nowhere. We should address the motor <coughs> of our ship's resources before. Nowhere we get near ready for that. Yeah, we have various supplies and whatnot here. And it and me to inform you that we lost several crew. And most of our provisions during the storm. However, Port Marge appears to be well supplied, and I expect the recent disaster has left several sailors in want of a ship. I suggest we contract for additional supplies and crew before we return to open water, or our voyage may indeed be a short one. Okay, well, I can't manage a ship because of the number of crew, so let's go see what we have. Now you can see the different positions you can fill in. Uh, like you've got port cannon, port cannon. You got the helm. You got another cannon right there. I purchased some supplies earlier, like for fresh fruit. So we will go ahead and put those up here. Throw the hard tack down here because I don't want my people getting all fucking depressed and stupid. Put that shit down there. Okay, I've got some other sails. Stormwind sails plus yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna change the sails out. Um there we go, that increases our movement speed. And you can change the flag of your vessel. Um this is the Deerwood sail, which most vessels won't mess with you. A few will, like pirates and whatnot, but for the most part they'll leave you alone. But you can get different flags for different nations, like the Puana, I think. I know for certain you can get a pirate flag, you can get a Valiant and Royal Dead Fire Company. And of course, that opens you to certain attack, you know, by certain people. A Carvel hull, and improved warship reinforcements. So we're going to improve our hull a little. She's uh, injured, so she can go in the medical pile. All right, so I guess we'll hit we'll hit Port Marge. Oh, instead of having to scroll around to do that kind of stuff, we could just do it like this. Wonderful. 
forgot about that. Yep, we now have our next faction here, the Pirates. And one of the most manipulative fucking pirates in the entire Deadfire. On behalf of the Principe Sen Patrina, I must request we meet in Parley. Agrasim, I will make this quick. I hope so. I have heard some marvelous tales regarding your ventures in the Deerwood. In fact, you are the first dragon slayer I have ever met, outside of a grave. Ah, suck it, some guy. Some fools would seek to make a fortune by pilfering from one such as you. Well, he's done his research. Might as well hear him out. I believe you have met such a fool. Captain Benweth of the Drake. Voxen of Ubildet Merla. Careful, ship hunter. Mind that you do not confuse a useful skill set for a non expendable one. My apologies. Rest assured, it will not happen again. Apologies, Captain. Didn't mean it, really. We're up all night, you know, searching out our friend here. You've been at sea a while. Your mind starts playing tricks on you, eh? Well, mine plays tricks on others, too. Usually don't mean much. Maybe see a bit of shadow, hear a bit of tune. Not less a person sensitive. Like, say, a watcher. Allow me to introduce one of my more special acquisitions. A diamond in the rough, if you will. Serifin is a magnificent ship hunter. In fact, he is how we tracked you. Not to say that I ain't wildly honored to be making the acquaintance of a lord as dashing as yourself. Gelarde, then that should make this easy. I am keen to show my rascal of a compatriot some much needed humility. I thought perhaps you may care to as well. For aunties, for do more job for me, friend. Hope you don't die in the effort. Benwet Drake took damage during the storm. Eventually, he will need to dock for repairs, and when he does, Serefin can find him for you. He is rather an unrefined creature, but he is a most skilled ship hunter, I assure you. Unrefined? Begging your pardon, Captain, but I'll be the eye fucking model of the gentleman of fortune. <laughs> as for Benwith, that sucker of squid tits be as predictable as the tide. I'd wager all my furriest bits that he'd set sail for deadline. That would be felicitous indeed, as I believe the traitor Remaro hides there as well. I quite enjoy killing two men with a single bullet. Wouldn't have even thought of it if you hadn't brought it up, sir. Now, I ain't hardly in any hurry to leave the fine company of the gentlemen of leisure, but the captain be right about me finding your mark. 
adding to that, you sailing a Fort Deadlight not knowing your innies from your outies, you might very well find the locals cannon fucking your boat to sudden splinters. What venture does not require an investment to be prosperous? The Seraphine is an allowance which I expect you will return. In one payment or another. Oh, you won't be regretting this, Washer. At least so long as you keep us heavy in grog and light on the onions. Ugh, them dirty shit apples ain't never agreed with me, and I'll be suspecting they never will. He's not sleeping near my berth, I promise you that much. I stay enough for Dunn, <laughs> my own safe port. I will await you there, should you be successful in schooling our wayward captain. Yeah, let's keep him as a cipher. I believe we do run into a, at least one or two companions who are multi-class already, so, you know. Okay, go to Port Marge and let's get some crew members. And I'm going to head to Nekataka and I'm going to call it good right there. Okay, supply. We've got some crew members. How many do I need? Uh, about three or four. Okay, two gold a day. Um, okay, well, I'll take you because you're... We've got two different things here. Not ah, a surgeon. Yes, I will take that too. And I'll take another helmsman as well. That should be sufficient. And supplies. Uh, we got let's put there our hull health, our sail health, because you can either take damage to the hull or the sail. That's our morale. Oh yeah, of course it gives you more experience for higher morale and whatnot. That's our medicine, so we need some more medicine, medical supplies. Ammo is not good either. And repair supplies could definitely be helped out somewhat too. Okay, well, that's a little of our grand, so let's just get it. All right, well, we're good to go then. Let's get out of here. Let's get out to sea. Okay, let me go to sea. Thank you. All right, well, off to Nikitaka. Yeah, I'm gonna call it in Nikitaka. As you can see, there's a. I really want to loot that ship. Damn it. I shouldn't, but I will. That eh, would just happen. The ring of a bell comes to you. Oh, fuck me, wind. running. Remember when I said the gods were kind of a pain in the ass? The ring comes again and again until soon the air is full with the sound of a thousand, thousand bells ringing all at once. You are alone. No, I'm not. And then you are not. An indistinct figure stands before you, flickering between forms like a fire cast shadow, a fixed, taunting grin, bottomless black eyes. A yawning chasm in the earth. The aspects of Barith, the Usher, and the Pallid Knight shift in and out of focus. And at their back, four indistinct shades hover. You feel an eternity stretch out behind each of them, reaching back to places so distant and yet so near you cannot comprehend their size. The shifting image of Barith, Watcher. Her voice is the discordant clangor of gongs struck out of time. I tasked you to discover Aethys's intentions. Tell me what you have learned. Yeah, yeah, we're going with this one. I will send your soul back to the wheel should the whim take me. Yeah, middle finger to you, bitch. Middle finger. Fucking do the helicopter to her. Fuck her. Her wan face contorts into what on mortal kith might be called a smile. On her, the effect is more akin to a rotting pumpkin caving in upon itself. 
Do not give me cause to doubt your commitment, Watcher. The pallid knight knits her brows. He does not seek to return to the beyond? Intriguing. Her sickly pale skin pulls tight across the bones of her face. As if the shell of this aspect does not quite fit the impossible creature it contains. The figure nearest Beareth oh, dissolves and reforms in the image of a thin-lipped ancient crone whose face has felt the melting kiss of fire. The goddess Wodica strides forward. Both middle fingers to this bitch. Does Aethus frighten you, Beareth? He should. Magran subdued Aethus' influence once before, and yet he returned. From out of Wodaka's shadow shuffles a hunched, bald man you recognize as the god Scan. His skin is mapped with swollen lash scars, and breath whistles through the ragged hole in his face where his nose once was. He does not speak, but stares up at Wodaka with naked loathing plain on his ruined face. Wodaka steeples her long, knob jointed fingers. We must annihilate Aethus now, before he makes a rash decision we cannot easily annul. She can the moon would do the job nicely. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we need that. A voice echoes from the shape nearest Bereth. The lava is too large to be moved and Kalfa too quick to be caught. Even for a god of Wodaka's strength and apparent lunacy. The figure beside the aspect of Bereth flows forward in a swirling cloud of ash. The ash falls to the tiles and reveals a molten-skinned woman leaning on a monstrous, wicked-edged broadsword. Mogren's glowing lips curl in disdain. We must find a solution to the problem of Aethys that is neither do nothing nor destroy the world. I acted in haste during the Saints' War. You will not goad me into doing the same now. To move against him while his plans are unknown would be the height of foolishness. We must find wisdom in precaution. The Pallid Knight tilts her head to the side and gives you the long-suffering, narrow-eyed look of a parent dealing with a particularly disappointing child. No. God, Another bitch. of the silent figures steps forward, and the warm, golden light of a summer's afternoon spills across your face. Let's all take a deep, calming breath. Perhaps cooler heads will prevail. Behind Helia's words, you hear the soft coo of doves. Aethys has been separated from us for too long. Isn't it possible he intends only to gather enough souls to reclaim his realm in the beyond? He should be welcomed. You look up then into avian eyes. Through them, you see clouds of starlings converge and divide. Helia puts a feathered hand to her chest. He wouldn't. Betrayal is not in his nature. Scan shuffles forward. Yes, yes. We should welcome Aethys' return to the Fold. His gratitude we can leverage to cajole him into divulging his plot. Then, when he believes himself to be in our good graces, we do as Wedeka suggests and crush him into the Earth. Scan pauses, inspecting you. Ah, and here is the Watcher who delivered poor, tormented Ali's back into the clutches of her uncle, Lord Harren. Curious. Scan licks the ragged edge of his lipless mouth and grins, then turns to Helia. I did not expect such a deliciously ruthless idea from you, Helia. I am impressed. Helia's feathered crest stands on end. You... You wretched little creature. Your point is well made, little watcher. If self-evident, Aethys has not been known to possess a vindictive nature. Indeed, he has occasionally been magnanimous to a fault. However, if we push him to the brink of reason, there is no telling what he may do. He is, as ever, 
unpredictable. Something the pallid knight gestures for silence. Aethas cannot be killed, but he may be subdued. Yet to do so will take immense power and time. Both stand in his favor. Mogren grits her black glass teeth. That is why we must ascertain his plans before he has the chance to put them into motion. She begins to pace. Her steps leave little trails of fire in her wake. Mogren stops and balls her hands into flaming fists. Even if we manage to destroy his current form, there is the possibility he could return if he has not already absorbed all of his children. The Pallid Knight casts a cold, cutting glare in Mogren's direction. Mogren speaks too freely. That knowledge is beyond your ken, Watcher. Wodica waves the gods to silence. Aethas gathers strength. His strength is a threat to us. Her voice takes on a sharp, almost panicked edge. There is no sensible answer to the question of a resurgent Aethas other than decisive final action. We will act when it is appropriate to do so and not before. The Pallid Knight steps away from the half-circle of assembled gods. She pulls herself up to a great height. The words she speaks next come not from her mouth, but from all around you. Follow him, Watcher. That's what I was fucking doing. The black of the Pallid Knight's irises expand until her eyes are as dark and cold as the void between stars. She bends down and brings her ghostly face level with your own. Your debt to me remains unpaid. She stares at you, unblinking. Like a needle drawn to a magnet, you are pulled toward her one compulsory step at a time. You blink open your eyes and find yourself on the floor of your ship's cabin. Alone. Okay, you can totally explore your ship if you want to. Talk to your the old throne lady, whatnot. Leave it to me. Loot your ship. I hear some, you know, tent, uh, some hints. Alfra was that chick who needed the uh, potion and gilded veil. Here's some other shit to growl. Yeah, here we go. Fragments of whispers of Yinwood. Fragments of the Blade of the Endless Path, so... Okay, well anyway, click this button to go back to the uh, ocean view. And hopefully I can make it to fucking... Cat, get down. Fucking Nikitaka without any more interruptions. But, the way this is going... This is already getting way too long. I'll come back and loot that ship later. You get basically a text-based thing that, you know, asks if you want what you want to do. If you want to search or, you know, whatnot. Because there are risks to looting abandoned and crashed ships and things like that. Because some ships have the plague. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, yeah, this is part of one of the DLCs, the, the Critter Cleaver. The cleaver is a handy, ethics-free apparatus yanked from a genuine Inguithin dig site and restored to glorious functionality. Simply slide your favorite feline down one end and let the cleaver do its charm. Yeah, so basically you can put your pets in there and I think you can even mix and match them a little bit. Get the fuck away from me, there we go. Now we're in Nekataka. And we're going to call it right there, because this is getting really fucking long. Yeah, it, the cleaver is basically a way of upgrading your pets. It's kind of a fucked up deal in one way, but in another, you know. But if you keep your eye open, there's so many pets around there, and running around. It, it's not really necessary, especially if you've already been through the game once, and you can... Activate Yadair's uh, pet slot. Which, as you know, I 
put one in mine and Pat gives everybody a plus one to perception, I think. All right, come on. <sighs> yeah, Nekataka is rather large. This is just one of the districts. You're far from home, farmer. How did you make it all this way in your little boat? Why do we gotta be farmers just because we're from Deerwood? Are you a farmer? Yeah, but you can't just assume. We got rabble rousers, too. I'm the harbor master, Kaoha. I must ask your reason for docking in Nekataka. Yeah, you do need to see someone, truly. I think it's the Animancers and the Spire you're looking for. To help with your head. Show them. Show them what you are. Yes. Yes. That's it. What's the matter with you? What are you doing? If you're trying to scare us with some cipher mischief, save the purple flames for the tribes of the Outer Islands. Now. What? What is this? Got style, Cap. Worm riddled, ship sinking, flat fucking freaky style. Okay, well, I need him up front. Uh, you can be right about there, I guess. Alright, well, now <clears throat> I'm gonna fix everything else right now. Uh, get you know, his AI and whatnot set up. With that, this has been running a little bit too long, so we're going to call it right here. Alright guys, I will catch you then.